नमस्ते हेलो 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 सुधा रघुनाथन हियर बैक एट एक्सप्रेशन एक्सप्रेसो एपिसोड टेन आई रियली के नॉट बिलीव वी हैव रीच्ड द नंबर टेन आफ्टर द सेशन विथ द सॉफ सोफिस्टिकेटेड डायरेक्टर गौतम वासुदेव मेनन it was a few days of watching romantic and uh, songs oriented melody oriented movies such as really the impact of a creator's touch welcome to episode 10 coffee for you and tea for me the lockdown has been eased a little but let us remember to keep the discipline of following all instructions the growth rate of the affected at number chennai is alarming yes and i'm sure you all realize that it is our responsibility to contain ourselves in the best possible manner today our guest is one of the finest bharatanatyam dancers of our country and her performances at prestigious venues across the world have received standing ovations and rave reviews steering away from the traditional norm often she has dabbled in something which is new infused her creativity her own creativity and style quotient into her choreographies that have made them all stand out and be appreciated for their novelty in contemporary themes her coll- collaborative productions have synergized through dialogues with poets musicians painters art historians and contemporary writers as always i was curious to know the other side of this beautiful dancers what she was interested in what else she was interested in and it surely brought a smile and made me really a happy baby at school she played so much basketball much to the chagrin of her mother who thought it would not go well with bharatanatyam going for a holiday to the mountains keeps her recharged rejuvenated here is the beautiful malavika sarukai for you welcome aboard and so delighted to have you with us malavika thank you thank you sudha for really inviting me to your uh, this a terrific program you have been doing and so many of them really uh, congratulations for the energy and the you know conviction that you have to do these programs and talk to artists and i think most importantly that we get a chance to speak because otherwise we are all in this kacheri format that we really don't get a chance to talk to each other and somehow this is provided the the occasion so it's really yeah. wonderful and thank you I'm really happy for it too because we've been able to talk at length. Uh, you know, I looked at my phone uh, the first time that I spoke to you, the very first time, and it was 27 minutes. Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah. So when you come for a show, we normally give a bouquet or a gift hamper. So I'm going to give mm-hmm. you a little hamper, a little bouquet oh. of uh, songs that. you know come together in a raga that you love lovely yeah. okay wonderful okay just a few minutes and then we go on to the questions bhavayami gopal bhavayami manasi vitam तत्पदम चिंतयेयं 
सदाभयामि गोपाल बालोमन सेवितम् तत्पदम् चिंतयेम् सदा कृष्णामि देवने Krishna me began me Krishna me began me Krishna me began me Hari smarani maro nirantar Hari smarani maro nirantar Paragati gihidu Paragati gihidu nidhar Hari smarani Mardo nido tere paragati ge nido ni dara alghari smarani tirupadi malai mele irkindra permani tirupadi malai mele irkindra permani tirupadi malai mele irkindra permani tirumagalal melo manamagal aragoni tirupadi malai mele that was very specially put together for you I can't tell you how beautiful it was. And it is the best welcome I think I've ever received. And it's so much better. It's really a bouquet of the most beautiful flowers and so beautiful. And really that it, you know, it touches the heart. That's the beauty of, I think, classical music and dance, you know, that when we touch that point, you no, know, it just goes so simply within. You know, we don't have to struggle to understand it. It's just the the beauty of the, the lyric and the tune and the way you sing it. And I think then it's also about all the bhava that you put in. I wish I could have just, you know, danced it. Next time we must have a session where we can actually move and dance. <laughs> you know? I, wish, no, I really wish that one point at Krishna, ni begane baro, you would just go into that. But then I could imagine, you know, what you would do, what Abhinaya you would do. But as you say, this interface is not you know, compatible for that. And I will wait, Malvika. I will take your words and wait for that lovely opportunity to interact Me with you. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so what difference has this lockdown bonus time brought into your routine? Um, they usually say from disaster springs opportunity. Is it not? So have you planned something very new? Have you come up with some really innovative ideas? Well, I think, you know, initially the lockdown for me, Sudha, was such, it was came as a kind of a shock. I was not, you know, really prepared for it. So a couple of weeks went just like just getting used to it. And then I found that it really gave me time with myself personally, you know, because otherwise we're just going from kacheri to kacheri and travel and performances and, you know, suitcase and stuff like this. And then this was like, suddenly you're actually left with yourself to say, now what will you do? You know, what are you going to think? And I think it gives, gave me, has given me and continues to give me time for, you know, reflection on dance, reflection on the quality of life. You know, what are the things like perhaps we don't want to do any longer? You know, some things out of habit, we keep like repeating it. But I think this has given a time to perhaps let go of a few things and perhaps gain a lot. I've definitely, I think, uh, read much more. I've just come back to reading, which I 
truly appreciate because I, it was a long lost friend I had forgotten about, you know, to sit with my books. Also, I think revisiting older choreographies, again, something I had put on the back burner, you know, pandlam, pandlam at some point of time. Never got down to it. And uh, obviously, I think, you know, the creative mind, as you will agree, is always, you know, when it's rested, it gets more energy, you know. So other things start stirring. You have It's like a field, I think, you know, when we leave it fallow for some time and we're not constantly trying to plant something within, that other cup, you, know, you feel that somewhere it's, you know, you have ideas. So definitely ideas, definitely things I'm working towards. But it's all at this uh, germinating uh, stage at this point. Yes, but I think the lockdown has. And I think importantly, one more thing I'd like to say is that, you know, it's helped us because in a way of the anxiety and anguish that we have seen also connect with the larger India, I think. Yeah. For me so, personally, definitely, you know, and, um, you know, take uh, like recognize that larger India and in in that process also try and help out, you know, try to obviously, you know, put in the donations and send funds and network people and trying to get people to, you know, give more. I think all that it's it's definitely um, added another dimension to my life for sure. Yeah, for surely. Yeah also added the gratitude element for people around you who uh, you know do so much for you and we hardly recognize them hardly acknowledge them because we are in our own journey as you said all the while chasing yeah. uh, I think this downtime has really you know kind of triggered that mm -hmm. sensitive mm -hmm. point yeah today uh, do you see that the digital platform is uh, like a gift packed solution for us <laughs> you see that that way um, also does it also help in kind of keeping this guru sishya parampara lineage going you know without this stopping for three months or six months does it really mm -hmm. help to continue uh, teaching do you think it helps because i do because i connect on the okay, okay. I try to connect. I mean, it's never equal equivalent to the physical presence of a guru. But I, what sure. do you think? You know, I think, you know, different um, artists have responded to it differently. But I think, you know, taking up your point at this point of time, when we're completely like in this physical uh, isolation, mm -hmm. not able to meet people, and also the fear factor, you know, whether you can, you should not, might not, and stuff like that. So everyone's keeping their distance. I think this comes as a, as a very health, not a healthy, but a helpful solution. Yes. I think it's a very helpful solution at this point, just to, you know, keep those threads still like connected. But as you said, and I firmly believe the actual, when you say learning, which is in front, you know, the Guru Sishya, I mean, said face to face. Um, you know, that in class, in that sense, I think that has another quality because I think that students learn through a sense of observation, you know, and uh, some things which are, which perhaps I think I'm not sure, I'm not very familiar with this medium, not, unlike the professional that you are yes. with this uh, medium. <laughs> but I think perhaps, you know, sometimes um, in dance and I think definitely in dance because it's also about this close observation that they might miss things in this, um, you know, online digital. So I think it's not about this or that. I think it's this and that. I think it's, you know, like saying, okay, we need both. And as long as this comes in helpful digital, we need to do some part of it. And, um, and also obviously go back to the, um, you know, face-to-face -face and personalized uh, training, which I really feel has no equal. Uh, but perhaps I'm a little, uh, like, classical-minded no, when I say that. It's, it's, I mean, we are yeah. old-fashioned uh, in a way, but uh, I think it's in a very healthy way because I also believe that every little nuance that you drop has to be picked up by the disciple. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 
only then that completeness comes, that fulfillment comes, right? For for the guru and the disciple. Right. So, so what will happen in six months? You think any great change? I don't know the way it's going now, Sudha. The you know what we are not, we haven't really seen much change other than you know different kinds of lockdown, and. what one gauges when we are talking to people in the arts and outside the arts is that i think people pretty much expect more of the same um you know to continue for at least another 6 months and i think audiences will not feel comfortable coming back into a theater until they feel the virus is really contained in their city mm. we need to know it's contained it's like closed and then we need a pause where nothing is happening no excitement no news news about this virus business then i think you know it will give audiences the you know a kind of confidence to say okay now we can come back as far as the artists are concerned we are all practicing we are doing our uh, you know sadhana goes on so we are all ready to come on stage and perform but yeah. i think we just have to at this point be patient and you know wait it out but i think it's possibly a, a slow comeback but comeback it will i mean but it's a question of time i think yeah see number rendu perkume amma apindra and uruvam vandu oru periya periya paalama irundhukku indha kalaikkum nam enakkum adhe maari dhaan ungalkum adha shrimathi saroja kamakshi has been a great uh, guiding influence Uh, an inspiration a motivation whatever you want to call it but i want to know what is the one specific thing that she was very mm-hmm. fascinated about for you you know you must hold on to this apdina endha vishayathe sonna i think if i have to kind of you know um distill everything that she said to me over all these years i think it would be the importance of living life creatively Beautiful. to say you know that yeah so to say that you know we shouldn't fall into routine or habit or you know humdrum like we just keep on repeating something but to say can we on a everyday uh, basis live life creatively and obviously goes without saying that live dance creatively you know live dance with um, a sense of wonderment that's a word i associate with my mother very very much wonderment uh, because she felt that dance was not uh, only a form of entertainment which sometimes it falls into that category of you know entertainment but i'm always believed that dance was you know took you further it it should take you further it has the potential to take you further and into a more uh, uh, shall we say a more refined more harmonious uh, state of being for the for the dancer for the audience so i think that was something she constantly spoke to me constantly so it was almost like a kind of you know it was like a shruti almost in my life i think from uh, however young i was i constantly heard her saying this for which i'm deeply thankful because number it environment really influences us you know i i, I think it plays a vital role uh, to be in the right uh, uh, setting you know right environment so i think yes these are the words i would associate with my mother who is an extraordinary person extraordinary yes absolutely what do you like about her i mean like in the sense not just like uh-huh. you know Look up with awe! Oh, my God, this woman, she has this quality in her. I think one. I think one thing which comes through was um, that you know we had very, very modest, um, very modest, a very frugal lifestyle when I was growing up. Very, very frugal, and she was a single parent. And I remember her, in spite of everything, you know, being so spirited. about wanting excellence so spirited that come what may i should dance i should you know she would do everything to enable me to go for dance class to learn with my gurus you know i think her spirit of uh, you know not giving up because things were down mm-hmm. and uh, not giving herself excuses 
she was a woman who refused to give herself excuses and it was you know if you have a if you have a will you can do it so try and find a way to do it you know it wasn't sit back and say hey oh idu varliya seri parvala you know try something else so i think that was her indomitable spirit of uh, to continue with you know what she believed in i think that's that's what i would really remember her for 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 all the, for many years you know 20 years like this it was very tough almost 30 years i would say so it wasn't a, um i didn't have a very um shall i say an environment of indulgence and an environment when everything was found and there was financial security so it was actually very very chaotic and in spite of that uh, she made sure that my dance continued you know so i mean it's like she is just a wonderful mother <laughs> as a person i think you know i have great admiration for her she yeah. has been a beautiful gift well packed to the world <laughs> <laughs> until what stage were you under the influence of your guru gurus i would say gurus and did the urge or shall we say you know that confidence that you mm-hmm. get that i can explore beyond all that is taught to me when did that confidence come to you well i know you know that confidence actually i think comes very very slowly because you know when we have tradition and as a classical musician uh, you know as an artist you'll understand actually tradition can be quite a burden uh, and <laughs> truly <laughs> isn't it right. yeah and it's a responsibility also you know because it's you know it's handed down and we are you know uh, we are standing on the shoulders of so many great artists who have come before us so mm-hmm. what we are given in is something very precious and uh, something which we can't just do what we want with so i think it's uh, one has to be very cautious and i think for me it was years of silent cautiousness you know looking at it even when i was with my gurus asking and kalanadi mami in particular she allowed questions to be asked mm-hmm. you know and i could speak to her being a woman i had i was i was young and i could talk to mami a lot mm-hmm. and uh, she you know allowed these discussions to take place so i had little questions which were coming up but actually when i started uh, you know doing my own work was after 20 years of training mm-hmm. so it was 20 full years of very disciplined uh, training with my gurus after which i i first started saying okay so what do i feel like dancing um you know what and i had questions about tradition and i think that was important for me to ask you know why am i doing this composition and not that what does it mean what is the role of the woman in these compositions uh, is she having to role play are we going to grant the woman more dimensions so there were lots of questions what is shringara what is bhakti shringara i mean huge questions uh, for which answers come in you know in fine rivulets through your life you know you it, there's no eureka moment and you say okay now i know everything about it you just don't <laughs> you know we have to keep trying we have to tr- keep trying yeah so it's so a long time there's different phases in your life or oh, give you those little answers that you want mm-hmm. i think so too you know because it makes you look at your own discipline and art form you know in a, in a slightly from another perspective you know and it could throw light on these questions yeah i think so, so. when we are raga today say shankara barnam or todi then i go back to a recording that i sang 20 years back and i say hmm. my god how could i have done that <laughs> you know that <laughs> bit, maybe a portion of the raga and i would say you know look at it with scorn listen to it with uh, kind of disdain that you know how could i have done that that is the maturity that the years bring mhm that i think so and the journey and and, it, and also i think the ability to you know reflect on our earlier work and and see where you know where there was growth where there was sometimes you know we tend to plateau at least i also felt at some point you know when you get very repetitive about something mm-hmm. it tends to go in a kind of um, not so convenient kalapramanam <laughs> you know it just kind of goes on 
but i think we have to uh, al- always be aware to look at our own work and uh, you know analyze it uh, as as artists ourselves you know because audiences can give us uh, comments but finally we know what we have done hmm. you know heart of hearts you know how did the program go whatever the applause whatever the standing ovation we know where it went well where we could have done better you know something you know so i think we have to constantly it's it's okay i mean that's part of growth i think you know um and we're not perfect human beings so so we have to continue so in sangeetam you know you can play it in your mind you know sometimes hmm. uh, when i have back to back concerts i don't practice um, okay open. always play it in my mind is the raga this part of it i will delineate i will elaborate this part of the swaram and things but natya telapri lalya i mean you have that sadhana is so important that because you need to maintain that poise that 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 if you have to stop at a point you have to stop but you know what i would say even i was under the same impression till i mean this i must have been somewhere in my 20s so that and i was doing some uh, concert at the music academy Mm-hmm. some booth concert edo i forget now what exactly it was before that i had gone to the mountains okay and i had sat somewhere outside you know the mountains is a place i like to be so anga peta i sat somewhere and something bit my leg so by the time i came back i had a swelling and all kinds of you know like it was a terrible state mm-hmm. and i could not practice and it was swollen i was so stressed because it was this academy program you know how academy programs are even at that time now we are all experienced professionals but you know when you're young you it's a big thing for you so i could not practice that's when i realized that mm-hmm. i could actually go through the whole piece in my mind wow. you know yeah and that gave me a sense of uh, calmness little stability i felt i'd revised it i felt i had you know what i had to do where like i was like working it out that was the first time through this unnecessary problem of this leg swelling up but i found that even dance can be worked internalized and actually i also do that before programs right you know very very important concerts then it is you know i spend at least an hour or so in the morning just sitting you know mentally going through it not really i i think it helps because you know finally music also is from within as also dance so you know we have to find that center you know to be able to to present it you know and also i think it you you are able to conserve a little bit of energy when you do it in your head and you know not really dance it out so you've choreographed pieces that, which are i would say out of the box with your uncanny ability to repeatedly convey even a sublime con- concept that has set your art you know in a kind of a very special place set it apart i would say what inspires you to pick such topics you know really like a uh, battle within where you explore the dualities of human kind through the characters arjuna and krishna based on the bhagavad gita and the madri ketra eppadi thondrudu which is the germination point i think it's just uh, you know it's like a, it's passion for dance it's passion and if there is an impulse to create um i take the risk i think that's it i just take the risk but i think i can take the risk only because my foundation is so sthiram you know it is so grounded and it's so deeply rooted you know the verticals in my dance are deep and i work on it so <clears throat> much so that i think um and i have a technique uh, and i worked on my technique that if a new idea comes whether it's you know arjuna and krishna in the battle within on inspired by the bhagavad gita which is actually very tough because it's all philosophy it's two there are two male characters and you know to just keep the male persona the body language of the male and then enter the emotions of you know the 
the contraction of emotions with arjuna because it's it's angst it's uh, crises it's a, a fear and then the expansion of emotions with uh, krishna which is divinity and vastness i mean it puts it put me through a kind of each time i dance it it's like a it's like mountains and valleys you know i'm but i think i take the risk i take the risk only because and i would really say it again only because i have, my foundation is so strong and the technique is so much in place that i can afford to say sari idu pannala i will take it hmm. and again my mother always said if you wish to do something go find out if you like to do it try it if you can't don't do it but try it don't you know don't uh, you know as artists i think so that we can't play safe you should artists not. are by, yeah artists are by nature you know a passionate intense people and so there's so many things that we wish to do and um, you know so we try it and um, you know sometimes we risk it sometimes uh, it, it's difficult you know creativity is not some something which falls into your lap and you say oh god i've got all my answers hardly you know but the process is exciting you know the process is so fulfilling keeps me going so i think it's it's having basically having a conviction and and faith that uh, this language this classical bharatanatyam for me i can find a language for new work because that that is the biggest um, a uh, challenge you know you want to do something new but can you find a vocabulary i mean if you can't then what are you going to say how are you going to say it so i think it's it's um, yeah it's taking a chance and uh, but following your heart tell us about the 14 layers of sound that was created with the 77 or 8 tracks 77 who said this was sai travanam said this where did you read this that is my secret <laughs> <laughs> no because uh, i thought personally from my side i thought we had a very uh, fairly um, you know a streamlined uh, soundtrack for battle within because we were not using too many instruments but i think sai shravanam is is a wizard he really is a wizard with sound and i deeply respect his uh, is aesthetics and what he's mm-hmm. able to bring to it so f- after our recording what he does with it you know what he actually fine tunes it i think you need to ask him because if possibly there were 40 i don't know but um, i think again it's in the nuance of it you know it's like we hardly see it we but it it creates that whole fantastic um, sound uh, design you know Uh, and um, and i think he is like he's really one of our top most sound recorders and artists and that's yeah. an added you know that he plays the tabla as well and he's so well versed in music so it's it's a pleasure to work with him certainly and the topics like uh, tari the loom and timaka were chosen by you because they moved you emotionally um i think you know again looking back at you know the kind of work i have done i have found you know other than doing the margam which i've also presented and i've also done productions on say shrimad bhagavatam because i think bhakti for me is a very strong calling very very strong calling and has become a stronger calling in these you know years of my life so i've done that so that has for, gone on as a constant but with that in my repertoire i think i've always had uh, the need for inclusivity mm-hmm. inclusive that you know our world is not only nayikas and nayakas you know it's a kind of traditional margam repertoire you know we stay within that but i for me that was uh, uh, putting me too much uh, making it too contained so for me timaka is a village woman of karnataka but i feel she should be seen on a mainstream stage because her story for me is very important mm-hmm. i feel we should learn from timaka it doesn't matter where she comes from 
she's an extraordinary woman of courage who made despair you know she made something out of it so i think that we have kind of got timaka in or tari again you know weavers i mean we're all wearing these fantastic sarees yes. from where from where so weavers and you know if you meet those master weavers they have so much to share and they are such simple people they're extraordinary artists their skill is unparalleled unparalleled and yet we treat them as you know as you know just some weaving community so doing tari for me was you know like a tribute to them it's like a focus on them and to create an awareness among you know our uh, concert going audience that these people matter and they are artists as we are artists definitely as we are artists, you know so it was a big um, it, it was a big learning for me huge learning um and and to see that kind of skill in their hands what they are able to do you know and kannotam you know they say so much is kannotam that measure with the eyes if can we do it tell me i won't even be able to set a loom uh, if somebody asks me just put the warp and the weft thread i won't be able to do it so it's just it's just an admiration to, for all of them which i think our our bharatanatyam uh performances should allow we cannot be restricted to only what we got 40 50 years ago but i think if we can keep tradition if we can keep the importance of the fundamentals of tradition and also bring in themes like the weavers why not and frankly weaving is you know it's also about coordination hand and uh, uh, leg coordination it's about rhythm it's about aesthetics so we're the same i think they even Dance sing weaving. they sing a folk song when they weave they have something to hum maybe they do i'm sure i'm sure you know so it's i think it's also letting uh, letting these um, influences into our art form you know i i think it just it it has more dimension and i think it's i i like and i really feel the importance of inclusivity i do believe we need that so mm-hmm. whenever it strikes me i just go and do something like this you've inspired me to because everyone <laughs> you're always singing about muruga shiva and uh, you know rama narayana devi why don't you sing why don't you compose or even borrow compositions mm-hmm. and on peace on environment Mm-hmm. Unity on sharing, on caring. You know, because yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, I also know. I also feel you know, Sudan. Like, if one was to say, put in one piece on environment, say in your concert, okay. Mm-hmm. See, the audience as such doesn't know, and I and I believe that the audience doesn't know how far the artist has traveled, because they are the audience. I mean, they don't know. but if you were to introduce them hmm. to something uh, which they have not it's not about being novel you know it's not about saying oh i'm going to do something new but if you genuinely feel that that you want to sing on the environment and there is a song to just include it you're not making it the main like sthai of the kon kacheri i think it gives us one more path to travel on you know it just allows the audience one more path and you know sometimes people ask me but why do i do what i do i try to say i am doing this as a lifetime occupation i have nothing else to do i only dance so i travel on lots of journeys you might not know my journey but i take you along and say come and see this is what i am seeing why don't you see what i see so i think it's a responsibility of the artist really to choose judiciously because you know you all do much longer concerts if a dance concerts are one one and a half hours maximum hmm. on the 90 minutes le i'm seeing can we do can we show the audience a glimmer of something else is it possible hmm. you know and i think the purpose of art is to take us further 
Yes. The purpose of art, you know, is not about standing on the on the shore all the time. We have to be, we have to abandon ourselves and go into the ocean. And if we go into the ocean, the audience will follow. They will follow this journey that the artist and the artist is morning to night only thinking of dance or morning to night thinking of music. Hmm. You know, so I think we should. We should, I think, in a way, you know, be be the driving force of uh, saying, of shifting the audience perception of music or perception of dance and saying there are also additions. It's not doing away with some mainstream. It's saying adding. I think that... that I'm saying that's also important, you know, in however way we, we want to do it. So I'm going to take a moment to acknowledge uh, people in the audience who are watching uh, this episode. Jyoti Mohan, Shamala Lakshmanan, Vishnu Priya, Usha Ramkumar, Shailaja Khanna, Balaji Ramanujam, Radha Bhaskar, Gayatri Shivaraman, Lakshmi Krishnan, Raji Krishnan, Geeta Krishnan. A lot of Krishnas for you. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Ratnam, um, Sharmi, Sharmi Ram, Jay Prada Ramamurti, again a guy from uh, Krishna. Jay Shri Hari says, uh, How much have, of tapas have both of us done to, uh -huh. re to reach this uh, stature or height? She calls it height. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm certainly, uh, as you said, grateful to our gurus and especially Amma for all of that, isn't it? So a right, time, a right question, Malvika. You seem to huh. blend tradition and contemporary thinking with great ease. In a way, your dance is very progressive, yes. But as you said, the verticals run very deep very deep rooted in the intricacies and in tradition. So you seem to be at great ease with both sides of the world. For this, did you have to field yourself from the so-called purists? It's an interesting question, you know. It is an interesting question. But I think because I did 20 years of, of traditional margam, and I was very happy doing it. I was very fulfilled doing it. It wasn't as if it was a kore or something that, you know, I, oh, why am I doing it? No, I was completely, um, I was, as I said, fulfilled dancing it. And I think I slowly went into different kinds of work. You know, that means, but you see, all the work that I do and I did and I continue to do is really very traditional in a sense. You know, what what help, what uh, affects the change is that my movement vocabulary, I could have added something to it. Because mm -hmm. as I explained earlier, a new piece requires a fresh way of thinking, which means it needs new vocabulary, new dance vocabulary, new movement vocabulary. So for that, I have to put in another impetus to, to create that. So I think with the purists, I think I just continued to do very honest work, which was very close to my heart. And therefore it communicated, I think, that passion of conviction. So it wasn't something I was putting on, you know, I wasn't just uh, feigning an interest in it. I was deeply interested in it. And actually it's deeply classical. It, it's just deeply classical, you know, on the fundamentals of Natya Dharmi, on the fundamentals of Rasa theory, on the fundamentals of using gesture language, on the fundamentals of aesthetics, of poetry, of imagination, except that I fill it with a, a, a different energy, perhaps. And perhaps the energy as I'm talking to, I'm just thinking about it. It could be a certain passion and abandonment that I feel. And it could be 
the reason why it sits easily on me, you know, it doesn't look like I'm faking something because, you know, um, I think that would be the greatest dishonest, dishonesty for an artist is to, you know, uh, uh, fake an, an experience, you know, uh, because I think dance as in classical music, you know, it, it takes you to the truth. Hmm. And it takes you to that truth which is within. And, you know, uh, and we have to, I believe, um, you know, validate and really like stay close to it. So I think purists have just come along with the work I've done. I think, that, you know, that, <laughs> over a period of time, um, uh, because it is classical. So how can they say it's, it's not classical? It is. It has all the, all the requirements of classical. Um, and I think it also has the inner, um, you know, um, the inner search for the spiritual. I think that defines my work because there is for me a constant search for a, the spiritual, which is not religious, you know. So for, a, for me, a tree or a bird or a river could be as spiritual as Krishna or a Shiva or as Devi. So I think it's, it's that, you know, that, you know, I've had, um, you know, I've danced at all the mainstream venues and had people applaud the new work I've done. And it's, it's, it's grace, you know, With, without benediction, you know, we, we really can't, we really can't as artists uh, do this kind of work. I, I think it's, uh, we owe a lot to, that's something we can't explain. So I can't explain it further, but... You've explained enough, and <laughs> I purposely asked, because huh. everyone who, you know, walks the path of change, a change here and there, uh, because of the calling, right? And what, yes. because we think it's right. And I don't think anyone has, is, has the power, nor is empowered to question that calling. So now we talk something which is very close to your heart. The What's unseen that? influence. Oh. <laughs> yes, Mantra, indeed. Yeah, so Mantra Goshal is a very special film where the director says it is this coexistence of consummate expression with a deeper spiritual questioning that makes Malavika's dance so exciting. For a director, who still says that he doesn't know anything about Bharatanatyam after, even after finishing the unseen sequence. I think it was a splendid package, great output and productivity. How did you arrive at this decision to work with Sumantra Koshi? Again, I think, you know, it was just some stray um, connections because we didn't know each other and we had common friends. Mm -hmm. And I think he came to some program of mine at the NCPA in Mumbai and he saw it and obviously he was stirred by it. Obviously something happened. He thought, yes. And then because we had common friends, we just had some discussion started. And I don't know, you know, sometimes in life when things have to happen, they happen without much planning. And there are other times, you know, when we keep planning and it doesn't happen. So I think this was uh, Unseen Sequence was one of those destined um, uh, milestones in my life that, that had to happen. And, you know, Sumancha Goshal is an extraordinary artist by himself. He is a very, um, very sensitive, very intelligent director. And I think what really worked in this film was both of us were only interested in the dance. He didn't make it an applause film, you know, with the awards one has got and, you know, all those other things which are all about recognition. But it's not about the heartbeat of dance. It's about all the other things that happen around us. Uh, and I think there we both got along like, like this because he wanted to talk about the creative process. I was only interested in the creative process. So it was that when we met and, start, and he came and he started filming, you know, it happened quite naturally. And he is, actually he has done, he knows I think a lot more about Bharatanatyam than many people do, but he will always say, oh, I don't know anything about it because he researches a lot. 
and he researched for many months before you know making the film so he came in with actually informed in a way and uh, then we took it from there but i think both our temperaments uh, clicked so we were able to you know make the film we did you know the opening scene of the film has you intensely kind of involved with nataraja chidambaram that is the first very opening scene mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who's idea was it? I mean, did you feel? Did you guide him to that idea, or, or was it his entirely? You you won't believe it, but he never told me about his concept. Oh, he never, ever, ever. We didn't share it at all. We just discuss. Okay, these. What are the important things to me? What do I want to do? Which are the choreographies? You know, because we have to choose, and we can't dance everything we want. So there was angela discussions and either panla either panla that way, and then it was I I just left it. I did not ask him any questions, and uh, he didn't uh, give me any answers. I mean, we didn't speak about it. So we'd go somewhere and we'd just shoot. He'd just shoot, and all the performances he followed me in in there for about I think a year or more than that. So I was not dancing for the camera. I was dancing for an audience, and he would shoot. so chidambaram kuda it was completely his um his idea i mean his the way that was his narrative you know it was his concept so till i saw the film finally i didn't know what it was going to be i had oh. no idea no i had no idea so it was one day okay the film is ready let's go and see so what four of us four of us saw it and that's about it, it was very very simple you know but he is an extraordinary director an did extraordinary you, person i think really you, very special for the film did you applaud or did the tears run down or you were you smiling what what was the first reaction the emotion the first reaction to tell you the truth was who is that artist are <laughs> yeah who is that artist over there i could not seriously i'm not i'm not making it up i could not relate to the artist on the screen because i didn't know i could even articulate so much i didn't know that about myself and so it was actually i was sitting and seeing someone else dance mm. so it was you know it was quite overwhelming also because you know it was the last year when my mother was uh, with me when yeah. we shot the film and by the time we finished the film she was no longer with me mm. uh, so it was a very uh, very um, a very difficult passage i was living through uh, so nearly all kinds of things were going through my mind and i certainly did not know who the artist was i just mm. felt like you know i'm watching somebody else i mean i didn't know i could not recognize it was me so it took me some time to <laughs> say yeah yeah this is this is uh, this is my dancing after all i didn't I, it was strange that is such a revelation really <laughs> <laughs> really holy i'm just being, being extremely truthful this is what i felt you know in which area of natya do you think uh, more work needs to be done to safeguard the heritage is it adavas or jatis or abhinaya or more uh, digging out old time compositions um it's a question of but i feel we need to make we need to move away from the physicality of dancing which i think is where we are pretty much there right now um uh, because and in that in a in a certain way you know the physical appearance of dance and all that has changed and dancers are doing you know they're more, more fit and they can do many more movements etc etc they they they're different it's a different generation out there was performing it but i think we need to go down the verticals i think we've gone a lot on the horizontals and we've done all kinds of ex- uh, experiments and things i think if we can go down the verticals and the horizontal think we are able to do both i think mm-hmm. then the quality we create will be more and primarily i think professionals dancers artists who are, who are professionals who call mm-hmm. themselves professional have to raise the bar have to constantly raise the bar and i think 
by doing the opposite of lowering the bar it makes it more convenient for more people to say they are dancers which is very nice because everyone can say i also dance you also dance you know everybody dances but it's not the best for dance it's not best for excellence you know we can't get excellence i mean in any field any profession if you lower the bar we cannot find excellence we can find numbers right we find numbers which is uh, which is okay but we must know that we are lowering the bar we must acknowledge we are lowering the bar and we are finding numbers i think that is an important how do we know sorry? We, how do we know we are lowering the bar who will say that the i tell guru? you why but no i know i don't think and i think guru is a very big word you know i'm even afraid to use the word guru these days because it meant so many things you know um it meant so many qualities but i think how, when to answer your question how do we know i feel if you go to a dance program and you come out and you're not affected by it you know something mm-hmm. doesn't hit you something doesn't move you uh then somewhere something has not happened i think that rasatvam you know that that other quality that classical music or classical dance has is it can be one of the uh, hallmarks of saying yeah something has worked but if you just go to a program which is just about the physicality of the dancer you know moving across the stage or if it's about the physicality which has no flow you know that's a word i use with uh, uh, because i think i've looked at it uh, flow is what makes it dance hmm. it's i like think we have a lot of dancers but we don't have dance you know we don't have that quality of dance in it so i think it's also important for um, all dancers including seniors i mean i question myself all the time you know it's not as if i'm out of this uh, uh, questioning mode and i've achieved everything and stuff like that i think we have to constantly question are we doing the best by the art form because the art form is greater than us we can only be you know sadhakas we can only be that instrument ah uh, and i think what exactly i think i've just got a point if we can differentiate that the me 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 is not so important we will mm-hmm. see dance i think what is being clouded is that the me persona comes through so much in many programs i won't say all programs i'm making generalizations only right now many programs that we don't see that that precious quality within uh, which is actually not the dancer at all that quality is is beyond that dancer and our search is like can we please find that quality even momentarily if can we just touch it and go but i i think that would differentiate and one more thing i think is that in classical dance more or less very often we are producing clones which i think is hugely detrimental not only to the art form but i think to the dancer also mm-hmm. i think we should desist and from that and we should say can we find the dance in the dancer not can we find another dancer in this dancer you know what i'm saying yes yes yeah you know i think these are small things that are but are very significant markers of saying are we staying the course and what else can we do and i i think as artists we have to constantly be on the alert you know we can't sit back and say okay everything is done we've all recognized and we've got our awards i mean no because you know dance is much greater and there's so much more to do So I think it's a question of you know how much can we give to it. You remind yes. me of what my guru M L B Mas said. You know she used to say, "Okay, ani mukhyo, ada follow up under the mukhyo, but yenna apriye ni paadra din under the teve illenva, ana vasiyo, because yeh koral, onno da koral vera, on koral le peichu vera, and she would say karanje pohana. You know she would always say that, chumma raga." 
பரவலான்னு பதினஞ்சு நிமிஷம் பாடுறதோட அஞ்சு நிமிஷம் நீ கரைஞ்சி போனீங்கன்னா ஆடியன்ஸ் கரைஞ்சி போனும் that raga must be more important that than you so that you can currentify in the raga yes so that ragam then has pradhanam over you you are yes. only the instrument for the ragam so it's like saying and the moment le ragam is so bigger. immense that who yeah bigger than you that you can currentify in it and then mm-hmm. there is that moment of uh, truth you know which, which is also you yeah so i think it's it's wonderful you know just to hear that and thank you for telling me about your guru <laughs> thank you she was a legend apart i can't say anything about her. Mm-hmm. true true about kalavani just a few words about kalavani about kalavani well it's really an art trust i started in um 2015 with the purpose of saying what can i do as a small give back to the world of dance which has given me everything in this life you know and a purpose and a fulfillment uh, in in my life and to say what can i do as an artist mm-hmm. i knew that you know personally uh, just by myself living a, the life of an artist it's simply not possible to have the funds and etc that is needed to support the arts but uh, some of my friends advised me and they said why don't you start a trust because then we can pull in some funds and then you can do you know so kala vahini yes 2015 we have had uh, we run some dance residency programs called dip um, you know which is really about like immersion 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 so it's like 3 days we just think and live dance and love it and talk dance and and then we have uh, we have had uh, fellowships senior junior fellowships and actually for the last 2 years we've presented with kartik fine arts uh, the dance for dance festival during the season which um, which was just gaining momentum of course this year we don't know how the season itself transpires but uh, yeah we don't know so we are you know a different kind of initiatives scholarships for dancers to create new work things like that so it's um, it's it's really to um, again it's about saying can we create excellence in dance and uh, in whichever way we feel we can i think it's the effort is important to try so it's a, it's a fledgling trust we just started the trust wishing you rise to greater heights in that kind of a journey Thank now this uh, um, more on a lighter note you ah. love mountains which yes, is your I do. choice for a vacation if you were to tell ah. me go I don't know I'd say anything which is which allows me to see the um, Himalayan peaks I would love the thing is that I love mountains but I don't like the mountain drives so that's a bit of a problem so yes. I can't go very close to like the high mountains because you know the winding uh, roads it probably make me sick but you know if I can stand at a distance and just see um the mountains and i think one uh, visual which comes back now was i'd gone for a speak make a program mm-hmm. years and years might be 25 years ago and it was in um, uh, near uh, mukteshwar in mukteshwar and we went there in the night my mother and me uh, and my musicians were staying somewhere else and they put us in a pwd guest house mm-hmm. it was very cold and we were all in blankets and we told the chaukidar uh, tell us when you see the mountains so early in the morning he came he knocked on the door and he said himalayas so mm-hmm. my mother and me wrapped ourselves with this whatever blanket sweater whatever and went out and so that the most magnificent sight we sat there it was a clear day and in the distance we saw just these you know like cardboard peaks madri just like that and right. we were just sitting and as the sun came on and lit up the mountain a peak a next peak a next peak it was just magnificent it was breathtaking and it was you know again it takes you somewhere else you know it, it sh- says that there is a a, a a divine order or a energy somewhere beyond and i think that was one of those absolutely unforgettable like oh moments absolutely it was superb 
it, all of us strive to be happy. I'm going a little fast, so uh, okay. Me. Yeah, sure. I'm tell me, tell me. Our conversation. No, all no, of no. us no. to be happy. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, what does a person need to be happy? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? I think first thing that comes to my mind is that they must enjoy what they're doing. It shouldn't be hardship. You know, there must be some joy. There can be some tediousness, but overall, it must give them joy, some lift. Yeah, I think that would be. Yeah. Okay. What is the one thing that annoys you instantaneously? Something oh. that, if, if not kept, you know, we have all have OCDs. <laughs> <laughs> things being kept in place you know reaching on time so i think one I'm thing i have to really like just say one thing of course there are many things but <laughs> if i have to say one thing it would be if i feel someone's being exploited or if i feel you know that sense of exploitation i think that that really that really disturbs me angers me yeah what is the first thing that you notice about someone when you first hmm. meet them body first. language body Ooh. language i think as a dancer you are know, constantly looking at the body and how is expressing emotions so i think for me without you know, we can't, i don't even have to think i think it's it's just you know how they use their hands how they sit how they talk so i think body language would be uh, <laughs> the first thing which strikes me when i meet someone and the last thing a very good childhood memory oh if i go back childhood um Uh, it would be marina beach mm-hmm. it would be with me and my little i had a little bucket and a spade yes. and i was making sand, sand castles on marina beach with my grandparents doting on me with that shunde you know there's the kadalai and all that which you get and the madri something and it was really i think a childhood memory would be just sitting in this like happy innocence on marina beach and making my sand castles mm-hmm. yeah. Tell me, I mean, you know, said if I said I'll take you to Marina Beach, give you shundal, sit there and make sand. Will you say no? <laughs> right now, I don't know. Oh, if it's Marina Beach is even in bound. Once. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Perhaps you should try it. Yeah. So Malvika Ganesh Iyer asks, what parameters are there, if any, uh, when you pick music or when you weave music for a particular piece like you did the makka and you had cool lyrics right i mean lyrics were different written out for you so how do you choose the ragas or do you have any idea or input in it or do you just ask someone no because i think you know when we have when i have a concept i kind of work on the concept a lot and then i have to explain it to the the poet who is writing the lyrics when once that is done it is actually working very closely with the poet and the musician music composer to say what is it that i have in mind you know how do i want to um, you know translate that into dance so there are lots of discussions lots of uh, you know trials with other ragams with talams to see if it it sits and so mm. it's very much um, face to face and um, uh, it's very uh, deliberate Uh, it isn't okay this ragam is fine let's try it doesn't matter no it's very finely worked on um, uh, so that you know i get the texture right of what is actually in my mind because no one else knows right if it's a new concept it's something only i kind of feel so it it's a slow process but it's with a lot of give and take a lot of questions a lot of listening a lot of taking in hmm. it, takes, it takes it takes time what else would you like to say what else would i like to say um, yeah is there a message that you have i would just say i think um, i think artists should speak more to each other i've really enjoyed talking to you i'd love Thank to have heard what you had to say about you know your journey in uh, music and you know because i think you know on the surface there might be a lot of like difference but i think you know in the deeper levels i think there are lots of things which are actually common to all of us um so i think uh, you know if artists could speak more 
and um, exchange ideas, not only collaborate, but just as people, I think, mm -hmm. you know, exchange ideas and talk, I think we build a better fraternity. Uh, also, I feel that uh, uh, we should see each other's concerts more. I mm -hmm. think dancers should go more often to music musical concerts, musicians should come because we are not really separate. Though they say, in, uh, you know, the de season is called the music and dance season. Yes, it is. But it's like two streams of the same uh, of a classical tradition. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be really great if we can um, hereafter um, just say, just meet and talk and say, you know, oh, what can we do? Because we could also perhaps discuss some of the issues which we have as, as classical artists in this very disorganized sector. As women artists, I think there is also its own set of um, uh, problematics mm -hmm. and questions, uh, you know. So I think in the Madri, kind of uh, a sharing would be, I think, quite wonderful. So I hope we can find, you know, once all this um, virus and all our physical distancing is over, we can meet up for a coffee in the true sense. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. And, and yeah, I really hope so. Thank yeah. you, Malvi, for being with us. This Being, I mean, you've thrown light on so many different aspects, your unique paths in this journey of yours has definitely made you a trailblazer, also a trendsetter, that students of the next generation can take away a lot of lessons from what you have said from the journey that we've taken. Thus far, miles traveled, many more uh, too. More to go, more to do. So do take care and wish you great happiness, good health, Thank you. newer trails, and more <laughs> togetherness, as you said. Yes, thank you so much. Really enjoyed it. And thanks for, to the audience as well. Thank you all. Thank you, Malvika. Bye. So viewers, one hour just runs by. Malavika has left us with so many thoughts. It brings in a different dimension altogether when you hear the words from the artist herself. And that's how art will flourish, will see changes, will see newer dimensions will open up newer worlds and audience. So Expressions Espresso 10 makes me sit back. I'm going to sit back after this show now. I'm going to just sit back, close my eyes, and go over all that this wonderful artist, Malavika Sarukai, has shared with us. Because I felt there was so much similarity in what she expressed. She spoke about her grooming period, how her mother was her strength, how there was frugal living, how she faced difficult periods. It was like a slide out of my own life. I could feel the, the emotions that were running in her mind. They were running in my heart too. So, we finished 10 episodes, and I'm still wondering whether we need to continue. Maybe after a day's rest, I would come back rejuvenated, going over Malvika's episode. And let's see if we can take it forward with more people who inspire us and motivate us and share their life's journey with us the next few days and your input, your feedback will help us move to the next session, Expressions Espresso, episode 11. Let's wait for a surprise to happen. Stay safe, goodbye and take care. Good night. <laughs>